Welcome back, everyone. Now that we've made it out of Lothering, we've finally moved past the real linearity of the past few sets. Uh, this is where the game actually opens up to quite a few different choices. From here on out, you get to choose what order to do the different quests in, though there is a bit of a difficulty spike depending on where you choose to go first. I personally recommend the order I do things in here just because it you know, you get to level up appropriately as you go, and it makes it a lot easier to handle each of the quests as they come. But before we get going, my first quest will be to tackle uh, uh, Levy's request, which was the Soldier's Peak, or the Warden's Keep expansion, or, uh, yeah, expansion, DLC, whatever. Let's take a chance to get to know some of the companions we have around camp. Now, he is admittedly one of the first ones that's the wrong direction there, Charlotte. Uh, he is one of the first ones that I've gotten to know, but let's get to know Alistair a little bit better, shall we? Something on your mind? Oh, he's already at that, is he? Now, you can ask him, has anyone ever told you how handsome you are? But that initiates romance, and that's not how I want to do it, because it does actually affect um, some later dialogue. So I'm actually going to go with, I have some questions. Of course. Can you teach others to be a Templar? Others, yes. But not yourself. I need someone who's trained first as a warrior. It's as much about discipline as anything. I guess if I'm going to give up what, Chantry secrets, can't I may as well go all the way. Send whoever you want trained to me in camp. And I'll see what I can do. I forget if I asked him before. But anyway, that's how you unlock the Templar specialization. Which is only accessible to you if you're a warrior. He's serious about that. Um. Something on your mind? Yeah. I have some questions. Of course. So, you said this Arl Eamon raised you? Oh, did I say that? I meant that dogs raised me. Giant slobbering dogs from the Anderfells. A whole pack of them, in fact. That would explain the smell. Well, it wasn't until I was eight that I discovered you didn't have to lick yourself clean. Old habits die hard, you know. Hmm. That would explain the breath as well, then. And my table manners, too. Though, come to think of it, they weren't all that different from the other Templars. Or did I dream all of that? Funny the dreams you'll have when you sleep on the cold, hard ground, isn't it? <laughs> Are you having strange dreams? This answer is female exclusive. Only once we were making mad love in my tent. I, uh, oh, I, I think I completely lost my chain of thought. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Let's see, how do I explain this? I'm a bastard, and before you make any smart comments, I mean the fatherless kind. Oh, so a literal one. My mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle who died when I was very young. Mm -hmm. Arleman wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow and put a roof over my head. He was good to me, and he didn't have to be. I respect the man, and I don't blame him anymore for sending me off to the Chantry once I was old enough. Sounds very nice. Uh, but why did he send you off to the Chantry? Ah Lehman eventually married a young woman from Orlais, which caused all sorts of problems between him and the King because it was so soon after the war. But he loved her. Anyhow, the new Arlesa resented the rumors which pegged me as his bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age ten. Just ten. as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. What an awful thing to do to a child. Maybe. She felt threatened by my presence, I can see that now. I can't say I blame her. She wondered if the rumors were true herself, I bet. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there. I blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. Oh. Well, you were young. And raised by dogs. Or I may as well have been, the way I acted. <laughs> yeah, but maybe all young bastards act like that. I don't know. 
All I know is that the Arl is a good man and well loved by the people. He also was King Kalen's uncle, so he has a personal motivation to see Logain pay for what he did. Anyway, that's really all there is to the story. Yeah, all there is, now that that's like a huge bombshell. You poor guy. Dang, that, that really sucks. You'll find that actually a lot of the characters in this game have really tragic backgrounds. And if I do sound a little bit off today, uh, I am recovering from being a bit sick, so that might come up a bit. Anyway, let's continue. Something on your mind? I have some questions. Of course. Uh, hmm. Why have you remained a Templar if you hate the Chantry? Have you seen the uniform? It's not only stylish, but well made. I'm a sucker for good tailoring. I thought Templars wore a heavy plate, mostly. That's just in public. In private, we have these yellow and purple tunics, right? Much more comfortable, and you don't break the beds when you jump on them during a pillow fight. <laughs> you had lots of these pillow fights, I take it? On confession day, we could go all night. Being a Templar isn't all about chasing men in skirts and hiding behind priests, you know. You don't really want to know about my being a Templar, do you? It's really quite boring. Then make up something more interesting. Or more exciting. You know, I like the way you think. But I guess if you're really curious, there's no harm in obliging. I have a couple of interesting looking moles I can show you later too, if you're interested. Why would you the go The truth there? of the matter is, that I did hate going to the monastery. The initiates from poor families thought I put on airs, while the noble ones called me a bastard and ignored me. I felt like Al Eamon had cast me off unwanted, and I was determined to be bitter. But I took some solace in the training itself, I guess. I was actually quite good at it. I think I understand. Using the abilities I have came after years of education and discipline that was difficult to achieve, if rewarding. The sword training and religious doctrine all came later. I never really felt at home anywhere, though, until I joined the Grey Wardens. And Duncan felt my Templar abilities might be useful for when we encountered Darkspawn magic, so I kept it up. What about you? Do you have anywhere you consider home? He has a different response to this when you're actually uh, engaged and once you've actually initiated romance with him. But I still like his response either way. I guess my home was with the Grey Wardens now. With you. It is. I didn't know you felt that way. We won't always be traveling like this, you know. Once the war is over, once the blight is... Well, a time will come when we'll have to think about having a real home again. Though that seems like a far ways off. And I suppose the Grey Wardens are gone for good. Either way. They can be rebuilt. I suppose you're right. We can create new Grey Wardens, but we'll never get back those we lost. I wonder if it would ever feel the same. Anyhow, now I've sidetracked us. We'd better get back to what we're supposed to be doing right now. We're just standing around camp staring blankly at things. Uh, usually when I get some kind of approval in conversation, I tend to save it. Because sometimes just selecting the wrong thing can earn disapproval. Anyway, let's continue pestering Alistair. Something on your mind? I have some questions. Of course. If you were raised in the Chantry, have you never... Never... never what? Had a good pair of shoes? You know what I mean. I'm not sure I do. Have I never seen a basilisk? Ate jellied ham? Have I never licked a lamppost in winter? Now you're making fun of me. Make fun of you, dear lady. Perish the thought. Well, tell me. Have you ever licked a lamppost in winter? <laughs> the way he delivers that line. Anyway, at the very least, if you recall by having a diaron with us in the intro to this, why, yes, I've licked a lamppost in winter. Just the once, and you didn't lose half of your tongue in the process. <laughs> I'm impressed. I, myself, never had the pleasure. Not that I haven't thought about it, of course. But, you know, 
Now, a lot of these have hilarious results. You can go with, oh, that's so cute, you're a virgin. Um, if you see, if you select you're a coward, or, oh, I see you lack the proper parts, you're probably gonna piss him off. But, you've never had the opportunity? Well, living in the Chantry is not exactly a life for rambunctious boys. They taught me to be a gentleman, especially in the presence of beautiful women such as yourself. That's not so bad, is it? I've mentioned I've been sick, correct? Anyway. Now you can select you think I'm beautiful, but uh, that leads to... That's a, that's a sweet sort of response. But I'm gonna go with... Not really, no. Good. You want a gentleman to court you, wouldn't you? If if you were to be courted by someone, that is. I think I'd like that. That's good to know. I'll uh, <laughs> have to remember that. Depending on how he, how you handle that, that initiates romance with him. So, just to double check. Alistair, approval is at 40, and he is now interested. The higher his approval climbs, the more uh, the his approval status will change. From interested to care, I think, is the next step. To adore, and then eventually love. Anyway, let's continue past... Well, no, let's save. Because it really does actually change the tone of conversation after that point. At your service. And once this uh, romance has been initiated, you can start discussing something private. Well, we're in camp. Now's as good a time as any to talk, right? Ah, oh. That's very sweet. Um, but... So you can actually invite him back to your tent fairly early on. So, how would you like to join me in my tent? Your tent? Ah, I know most guys would probably leap at the chance to be with you, but I don't know if I'm ready for that. It's a big step. E I guess that must make me sound like an idiot. I mean, turn down an incredible woman like you, I'd have to be. <laughs> Oh, I think it's cute. <laughs> just what every man wants to hear. I guess I was just raised not to take this sort of thing lightly. I hope it hasn't put you off. It's kind of mildly insulting. All right. Uh, so, now that I've handled that with my usual deft brilliance, time to move on. And take a cold bath, maybe. He does approve, however. If you handle that delicately at your service I'd like to discuss something private well we're in camp now's as good a time as any to talk right Look how hesitantly he says that um I need to tell you how much you know I'll save that for later Never fair mind. enough off we go then now there are probably more questions that you can ask him but I think we've spent enough time getting to know him like the majority of this video Probably. So let's uh, chat with Liliana a little. Yes? I know I did a little bit of that last time, but I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. What would some... What would someone like you be doing in Lothring's Chantry? What is meant by someone like me? By the way, you can start flirting with her right off the bat. Male or female. But, uh... You know, a beautiful, charming woman like yourself. And there were no beautiful, charming women in the cloisters, you think? <laughs> you would be wrong. There were many lovely young initiates in the Lothering cloister. All of them chaste and virtuous. <laughs> it added to their mystique. Because then, there were forbidden. And forbidden fruit is the sweeter, no? <laughs> um, and you can hit on her. What about your, what about your fruit? Is it forbidden? But I'm not gonna quite go that route. That's really not fair to me, Liliana. That's what they say. I did not take those vows that the initiates took. Vows of poverty, chastity, among others. 
<laughs> the Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. Affirmed? We affirm our belief in the Maker, in Andraste and the Chant, but other than that, there are no vows taken. So your skills were learned before your time in the Chantry? I was a traveling minstrel in Orle. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. She seems to be dodging that answer, but she does approve. Let's see, is there anything else I can really talk to yes. her about? I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. And that's not really important. It doesn't really share any more about her. So, as you may have noticed, there's a considerable difference between how much characterization Alistair got versus how much characterization Liliana got. Hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, that's a major complaint among many Liliana fans, is that she's not as, uh, developed. Not even as developed as Stan, oddly enough. Why are we stopping? Speaking of which... I think we should talk for a moment. There are darkspawn to be fought. Is this delay needful? Are you alright? You were in that cage for weeks. You are concerned. No need. I am fit enough to fight. You said you were in the army? I am. Have you ever fought in a war? I have always fought in war, human. What do you mean by that? My people have been at war since the moment we set foot in the Northern Islands. So the Kunari don't come from the islands? We do now. <laughs> Where did you come from before? Somewhere else. Can you be some... Can, can you be more specific? No. I was born in Saharan. Of the land we came from, I know nothing, not even its name. I do not see how this matters. Saharan and Parvolan are distant. Ferelden and the Darkspawn are immediate. He makes some good points. True. Let's go. As you wish. He approves. Yes. Again, I save because I feel like it. And uh, let's continue to get to know Stan a little more. Yes. What were you doing in that cage? Sitting, as you observed. Very funny. Thank you. <laughs> Are you going to answer my question? I did. Parshera, was there anything <laughs> else? me for that uh let's go as you wish he approves plus seven once you show him a little bit of concern and while i do have a bit more to discuss with stan i think i'm going to cut the video up here and i'll see you next time on let's play dragon age origins hope to see you then